our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. talking today. God's forgiveness of sin is one of his extraordinary gifts to his children. We see over and over example of forgiveness in the Bible so we can know God freely and completely forgives our sins. God is always ready uh, to dust off, uh, forgive us, set us on the uh, our uh, feet uh, back on a mission again. There are two uh, Old Testament words for forgive in, in the Bible. The first one and uh, uh, more commonly used is uh, salah, uh, S-A-L-A-H, uh, meaning uh, to practice forbearance, uh, pra uh, pardon or forgive. It is never used to. Uh, it is never use of a man forgiving another human, but only of God forgiving man. The other Old Testament word for forgive is nasa, N-A-S-A, -A, uh, meaning uh, to lift up, take away, bear up, or carry. It offers a beautiful ritual, ritual for the uh, for what God does uh, with our sin and guilt. The New Testament word. Uh, used for forgive is athemi. Uh, it means to release from legal or moral obligation or consequences to cancel or remit or pardon. It can also mean to go away or send away, uh, to disregard, to let be. So, on, uh, and then another New Testament word of thanksgiving uh, of this uh, forgiveness is uh, charzomia. S C H A R I Z O M A I. This word often uh, used by the Apostle Paul to emphasize the uh, gracious nature of forgiveness. It is defined as to grant as a favor, uh, gratuitously, uh, in kindness, uh, pardon or rescue in kindness, to discover, uh, to deliver, to. Uh, to forgive uh, freely. This uh, psalm is written when David did adultery. David wrote at least 75 songs that we know of sure and probably wrote the most famous uh, song of all time. You may remember it. It begins with these words, Lord is my shepherd. I know uh, there are so many that we love, and I have no doubt that every one of David's songs, if written today, would have surely hit double platinum. <laughs> he wrote 
uh, love songs, he wrote sad songs, he wrote uh, glad songs, and he even wrote songs that would pick you up, and songs that would put you down. But every song that he wrote had a way of penetrating right to your heart. Sometimes uh, David wrote songs for tomorrow, and sometimes David wrote songs for the uh, songs for today. And uh, but today uh, we are uh, going to listen to the song that he wrote for yesterday. Actually, let me tell you what I mean. The song that we we read. Uh, today, uh, the song that we are going to study today is a song about our past. The truth is every one of us has a past. If every one of us is honest and we live long enough, we will look back and uh, uh, see things in our past uh, we wish were not there. We all have things in our past that are that we regret, and there are skeletons in our closet uh, we wish were not there, uh, not there, and nobody discovered. Also, nobody is uh, perfect, and if we had our lives to do over again, and there are certainly things we would do over, and I have some of those kind of emotions too. Nobody lives a perfect life because nobody is perfect. If we could live life over there, uh, are some things we would do over. In this uh, song, David is looking in the rear, uh, rear view mirror while he's driving his life uh, at a terrible thing that he has committed in his past that was his fault. The ghost of guilt haunted him 24-7 until he finally made things right with God and with the ones that he sinned against. In effect, Psalm 32 is an x-ray of a forgiven heart. I'm sure you know the story, but by but uh, by the way of review, uh, uh, David had committed adultery with another man's wife, got her pregnant, and then uh, had her husband murder to hide what he had done. That fall had literally caused an earthquake that had left him unbelievable damage. It cost a man and a baby their lives, destroyed a marriage, shamed a king, and broke God's heart. The ghost of the guilt has been haunting him day and night 24-7. He was in the wrong and it was his fault. David's first step is to confess the sin. That is what he did when he couldn't sleep, when he couldn't do anything, he confessed that sin. David had done that and we said, uh, we, we said the second thing uh, you must do is to reprint of your sin and with God's grace turn away from it. David had done that. Now in this psalm, uh, in this song, David tells us how to plant your feet on the solid rock of forgiveness and turn the sadness of a fault into a gladness of forgiveness. The key uh, to take away uh, is to you will only act forgiven when you accept the forgiveness that God has applied. There is a reason why some of us have confessed things and we have done wrong and repented uh, to, uh, of them uh, and have truly asked for forgiveness, uh, but you still don't feel forgiven. You struggle, uh, we sometimes all struggle with guilt and I know why. I hear it all the time in my line of uh, work. I, I, I hear people say, I still can't forgive myself. First, recognize your sin. Even though this is a song about a fault and a failure in David's life in the past, it is not a song of sadness but a gladness. It begins with the words, blessed is the one. 
and it ends with the word be glad in Lord and rejoice. The word blessed literally means happy. The happiest person in the world is a person who, who, who has a conscious mind, who clears all the faults and feels forgiven by God. Happiest man in the world is a man who takes a step to be forgiven. David is a happy guy because even though he had done wrong, God has made him right. The reason why God has made him right is because he um, admitted that he has been wrong. If you know David's story, at first he, he, he tried to cover up what he did. But, what, uh, but that didn't work out uh, too well for him. We see it in verses uh, 3 and 4 of the psalm, which says, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning of all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. Think about it. He was in a constant pressure that he did not find joy in living. At first, David tried to hide what he did and we all have this tendency to cover up when we have messed up. We all carry a broom uh, with us that just wants to sweep things under the rug. This verse tells us that how David physically, emotionally, and spiritually suffering because of his sin. We have not, we, uh, he has no, not strength uh, and have not lost himself. They finally realized uh, that uh, will never get clean until you come clean. So David was not put on the freeway of forgiveness until he finally recognized his sin and did it fully. We need to re receive God's forgiveness by confessing and finding God's gift in it, accepting God's forgiveness for ourselves. This is so important that I don't want you to miss it. Until our sin is forgiven, God knows about it and God remembers it. It is a barrier between us and God. When God forgives our sins, God forgets our sins, and we should too. It's very important that God forgives and forgets. The reason why some of us in this room, uh, in this uh, worship service, are, are, are forgiven, but we don't feel like we are, is because we keep trying to remember what God has already forgotten and trying to uncover what God has already covered. I want to share with you a story of Anita Smith and Romy Smith. Anita Smith and Romy Smith was watching a TV one day and found themselves to be, to be zonked and found themselves in a place where they felt called to go to Lebanon to be a teacher because there was so much need in it. So they left uh, United States of America and went to Lebanon and started becoming, uh, started a small group of, sc uh, of school uh, uh, students uh, and they taught chemistry and physics and math. While they were there, their, uh, their group started, the group of kids uh, grew a little bit bigger and they started uh, having this mission to teach these children who are in terror. So one day in the early morning, Rami went out uh, to take a walk and then he was, uh, he was running uh, as usual every morning uh, and there was one gunman who uh, gunned him down and he passed away. He was murdered and then um, the whole idea of these, uh, of, of, of this uh, wonderful ministry really got halted. But Anita continued uh, to give uh, what is needed for people at that time. 
so it is a law over there that when uh, there is when they find this gunman or whenever somebody does wrong towards someone uh, and when they uh, ask them to hang at that moment the person uh, has a right not the person who is hanged but the person uh, who have lost their loved ones has a right uh, to uh, forgive or uh, let them hang the person. So Anita was called and asked what uh, what is her, her choice. She on that day went uh, to meet this man and he's uh, and she was sitting there and he was in the plow just by it ready to be uh, to uh, to give out his life uh, his verdict to die at that moment Anita came up and said Jesus forgive me and so I forgive my neighbor I forgive you because God has forgiven my sin and that man today is actually working his level best to teach other people just because he was forgiven you see when we forgive others it is hard no doubt it is hard to forgive others and it is hard to forgive ourselves but God has shown us a new way through Jesus Christ saying to us that you are forgiven I have forbearance I have repented and now you are free the problem is some of us in our here are still on a guilt trip because even though we realize God's forgiveness we haven't accepted it then we need to take the third step which is receive God's grace listen to verse fifth it says I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquities I said I, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquities of my sin this is the longest verse in the entire Psalm 32 which tells us it may be the most important verse and is the very heart of what David is saying David is giving his testimony of just how forgiven he is and how forgiven we are don't miss the progression when we acknowledge our sin when we don't try to hide our iniquity when we confess our transgression God completely forgives everything and totally washes away the dirt of all our guilt when we conceal our sin guilt will imprison us but when we confess our sin grace will free us when you empty your sin basket God fills it with forgiveness no matter how dirty we feel ourselves how dirty and how difficult we think that we cannot be forgiven when you get into the shower of God's grace you are completely immediately and permanently clean if it is not so there is no point Jesus going on the cross if it is not so then there is no point having a faith and trust in God who worked through Jesus Christ to take away our sin so remember that it is not about who you are but it is what you have been forgiven and once you are forgiven let us be a forgiven people let's walk on that path let's see newness in our life let go it is time for us to let go it is time for us to let go and let God see through it that we are forgiven and forgotten let us receive God's forgiveness. 
And that when you receive God's forgiveness, like this Anita uh, Smith said, I receive God's forgiveness and so I am giving it to you. Once you receive the God's forgiveness, it is easy to give forgiveness to others. It is easy to not walk in bitterness and grudges. You see, the problem with us is to accepting ourselves that we are forgiven. So today, go from this place, knowing that Jesus Christ has taken all, all of the sins. But the first step for us to do is to confess and confess and receive the forgiveness and have trust. And once you do that, call someone, call them and let them know that I have forgiven. Spend time with Christ, get strength and courage because it needs the biggest courage ever. And then only we can also say with David that yes, I am blessed. May God give you the strength and the courage and above all, the way to confess your sin and open hearts and minds and soul so that you may be showered by the grace of forgiveness. Amen.
Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Avni. is going to lead us in the worship service. Um, also, remember that we will be starting our new sermon series called Reshaped. I hope that you will join us. Let us now go from this place, um, a place where we may experience the forgiveness. May your lives give glory to the Father in heaven. May your hearts be sustained by Christ Jesus and the one in whom all evil is defeated. And may your spirits be filled by the breath of the Holy Spirit. And all may say, Amen. <laughs> 